When I first came to Dubai, I was forever looking up. It was impossible not to. It is undeniably impressive on any scale. But as captivating as the skyline remains, in more recent trips, I found myself increasingly looking around and past the neon and steel and glass to the spaces in between. What was on the other side? What was behind the facade? I have been itching to find out. When I asked people in Dubai, they would say, out there? Oh, nothing. There's nothing out there. Well, I had to see this nothing for myself. It's easy to forget that much of the UAE is desert. The sparkle of Dubai and Abu Dhabi are distracting from the fact that much of it looks like this. And it's really worth your while to come out of Dubai or Abu Dhabi or wherever you may be staying and come into the empty quarter as it's known. It's almost like going backstage and seeing all of the behind the scenes of places like Dubai. And it's, it really kind of gives you a stark contrast as the, the rest of this country. I think it's, it's not only is it necessary to kind of see that contrast, but it's also stunning. The landscape and the lifestyle are just not something we get to see every day, at least in the West. We're only 45 minutes drive on paved, beautifully maintained highway. So it's not exactly a trek out into the wilderness to experience something like this. You can do it in the morning, but it's absolutely worth your time to get a true sense of perspective and, and contrast of this incredible country. But to truly appreciate the vastness of your surroundings, it's best to take to the sky. You really get a sense of the scale of just the, the empty quarter from up here. What an what amazing and unique perspective. It's my happy place. You're flying. Silent. The empty quarter is 250,000 square miles of desert, covering parts of Saudi Arabia, Oman, the UAE, and Yemen. For thousands of years, caravans of frankincense traders carved their way across the empty quarter, with legends suggesting that they were serving a now lost city that, along with the trading routes, have long been lost to the desert sands. But as the old adage goes, what goes up must eventually come down. And down we came at the mercy of the desert winds. It was they who decided where we were to land, miles and miles away from where we started, in another emirate entirely. It really shows how strong the winds can be. We've been up aloft for about 45 minutes and we're in Sharjah now. And the mountains there, beyond those is Oman another country uh, a long way from from Dubai as a city so it really shows that while you're floating up there silently you were moving in at incredible distance when last time I did this which was 20 years ago the pilot would spit over the side and watch his spit drop and see where it moved to see where the wind now they've got iPads and technology and gizmos to figure all that out and they're talking to each other watching everything but the fact that we've gone this far is just mind-blowing to me it's worth mentioning that it was only at this point, safely on the ground, that Greg decided to confide in me that he's harbored a lifelong fear of hot air balloons. And while I felt momentarily guilty for subjecting him to actual terror, it did explain his brisk exit from the overturned basket. Our beautiful balloon was part of a complicated and intricate time machine. Camels, vintage Land Rovers, Bedouin tents, all coming together to remind us that out here, very little has changed. A tried and tested way of life honed over generations. Of course, there's cell phones and satellite TV and Toyotas in 2023. But life in the desert is life in the desert. The distances, the climate, the challenges, are the same now as they were 50, 200, 500 years ago. And floating above miles 
and miles of the emptiness in total silence is a sharp but necessary contrast from the constant light and noise found just 90 minutes away. 